Welcome to the Cult Film Showdown. Controversial Saturday morning cartoons. This is part two of a 10 part series talking about cartoons that were made for kids and in general Saturday morning cartoons, sometimes uh, morning weekday and but made off of R rated content. Uh, and our first episode, we looked at Robocop, two different series. Uh, 1988 and 1998. So go back and check that one out if you haven't heard it. And let's uh, let's talk about who else is here. So I'm Jim Cotta. I'll be choosing the channels uh, for this series. And we're also joined by Nick Boxer. Just this one time, you guys can call me Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> And don't be grabbing for his lucky charms. It's Jack Hall. Oh, hey, keep your hands off me lucky charms. <laughs> if you look at any one of these lists of, of why the heck did they make a cartoon out of this? Uh, the granddaddy of them all is 1986's Rambo, The Force of Freedom. Uh, Jack, give us a background of what the heck this thing is. Well, the reason why it's probably at the top of the list, it's probably not the most controversial movie, but it is the first R-rated property to be turned into a kid's cartoon. So that created a, quite a bit of controversy at the time, being the being the first R-rated property turned into a kid's cartoon. Originally, it was a five-episode miniseries that was aired in April of 86, uh, went on to uh, be renewed as a daily syndicated uh, uh, series that was uh, 60 episodes to in order to again sell a toy line. Um, the first episode that we're going to be seeing here only has three members of the, the Force of Freedom, but eventually uh, they grew and uh, had quite a few different characters and uh, you know in the, in the toy line. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get to talk about some of the cooler ones like uh, the fact that well, it was the 80s, so I mean, the good guy team had a, a ninja called the White Ninja. And uh, the bad guy team called the White Dragon. Nice. The White Dragon. Sorry, the the Black Ninja. Wasn't that the name of the bad guys? Didn't know Ninja because it was the eighties and it was all Oh, I don't have pictures, so ninja. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they were twins, and one wanted to kill the other because he was bad, and the other one was good. Yeah, no. So unfortunately, we don't get into that, but we get a lot of the. This first episode is really designed to make. Rambo, uh, superhero, and one person who was not—I mean, David Morrell, obviously, probably the author who created Rambo in uh, in the novel First Blood, uh, probably just looked at this and said, "Hey, why not? Let's make some money." But uh, one person not pleased about this project was Sylvester Stallone himself, who might actually have cared more about the character. I mean, this is just one of many novels that Morrell wrote. <laughs> This was uh, one of uh, the more iconic characters that uh, Sylvester Stallone had. He might have cared more about him than Morrell did. So uh, he was none too pleased and quite embarrassed that this cartoon existed. <laughs> oh, why? Why was he embarrassed, do you think? It is such a because weird... it's so... <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it takes... I mean, it, I'm joking, the first... it's terrible. Well, actually, as a piece of entertainment, as a piece of entertainment, I really enjoyed it. Like as a as like a cartoon to watch, I'm like I could watch this anytime. That I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very entertaining. Um, <laughs> it's weird. It's it's uh, it's got some questionable choices, but it's entertaining. I thought as a as a cartoon, it moves and well, and it's it's fun. But um, yeah. Uh, it's it's so far, especially from the first first blood film, um, so far removed from what the core of the character is. I mean, right at the beginning, it's Rambo, your country needs you. You know, and, and Rambo is a patriot, but he's also being screwed over by the country. And it loses all the subtlety and subtext that, that <laughs> ever, was ever in the films and mainly in the first one. The second oh, one they're is they're just, not contradicting you know, uh, subtext they're contradicting text <laughs> true 
He can't wait to go, man. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought that was such a weird moment because uh, it is like the setup for the entire series concept is, uh, you know, his love of country and sense of duty. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't know if you've watched any of uh, like you really should, you know, turn the sound on when you're watching his flicks. If you want to get <laughs> like it, it takes like a half an hour to control like Rambo. Rambo three. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. But yes, this is before Rambo. That's in pre-production. It is, yeah. But this is before, yeah. Well, in th- three, yeah, three definitely is a lot more uh, jingoistic. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it is that Reagan era. It's fighting the Ruskies in Afghanistan, uh, dedicated to the freedom fighters um, in Afghanistan, uh, and. Uh, so, I mean, it, of a time, it is like a transitional, but we haven't seen that transition, as uh, as Jack said. It's still a, still a couple of years off, isn't it? Is it 87 or 88 that that one came out, or a little later? I think it's 88, I believe, that one came out. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, James Cameron wrote that one, I believe, uh, with, uh, with Sloan. And, and um, it's, you know, I mean, if you look at part two, I mean, he's more going into... I mean, yes, they're they're fighting the bad guys, and 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 there is a sense of country, but it's more that he wants to rescue the POWs. He feels sorry for them than it is anything else. And in the very first film, I mean, he's just like he's a he's just screwed by the system completely, right? So I mean, it's it's yeah, this one is it's like it's definitely. In, I mean, I don't think anybody's. We're not. We're not breaking a new ground here to say that this is inspired more by Jim <laughs> Joe than by Rambo in many ways. Yeah, I actually had a theory watching this that maybe it was a John Wayne animated s- series that they repurposed. <laughs> um, I did have that feeling that it was like something that they were already working on that they turned into a Rambo cartoon. Uh, uh, it just had that, it just had a tone to it that like I, I think this could be any character, uh, <laughs> and and it would still work. Uh, yeah. Do you want want me to talk about the plot of the pilot episode? Yeah, absolutely, bit? absolutely. Tell us what happens um, in this thing. Okay, in this one, the bad guy, General Warhawk, takes over a small town with his vast army of fairly nondescript uh, troops uh, for an animated series. I, was really disappointed with the variety of troops he has. Uh, he has one guy with a club and one guy with a t-shirt, but that's it. Um, and all of a sudden the American government decides, ooh, we need to intercede there. And there's only one man that uh, can uh, take care of this. Let's call on John R- Rambo. Uh, a colonel goes to see John R- Rambo. Rambo says, hell yeah, let's go get General Warhawk. They spend a lot of time collecting a team. <laughs> they fly to this country to fight General Warhawk. And then Rambo turns around and looks at his guide and his pilot and says, wait here, I'll take care of it. <laughs> I, then he runs me. headlong towards the enemy. He runs, like, directly there. He does not hide behind a bush. He, he just goes directly at him fights every bad guy and wins the day. Um, And that's it. It is so amazing uh, to me that, I mean, they're shooting at him and only when they begin shooting from like three feet away does he run even and they still can't hit him. (laughs) Yes, these guys make the stormtroopers seem like crack shots. Um... (laughs) Yeah, and he gets captured, and his team, they do what they're told. They wait out this outside of the town. <laughs> no time does the pilot or the, the guide decide, you know, we should maybe help this guy out. No, just let him get tortured. Everything's going according to plan. <laughs> Not that it had a torture scene was... Uh... Again, for a couple of kids. 
Oh, oh my god! I'm like, <laughs> so torture. It looks horrible. <laughs> that was so weird. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he gets it gets hung from uh, it gets hung upside down in a weird way. Um, uh, maybe because his shoulders don't work right. I mean, maybe they're trying to duplicate what you'll be able to do with the toy. Uh, when you're that <laughs> muscled, it's hard to take a lift a phone to your ear. So, you know, <laughs> having your arms over your head is not easy. <laughs> hung above. By the way, have you ever seen head. a cartoon or anything? in the world that makes a guy tying his shoes more dramatic than this. <laughs> like they show it in the opening, they show it at the oh, he's that's right. tying his shoes. Muscles are just popping out as he's tying his shoes. And it takes like 15 seconds for no reason. He's tying his shoes. And and uh oh man. Uh, the bad guys by the way this savage stands for specialist administrators of vengeance, anarchy, and global extortion. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that, that means you're trying really hard to spell the word savage. That's what that means. <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely lifting from Spectre, which also had as a silly name, but you're like 20 years after they had a silly name for Spectre. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, my favorite moment in, in, in this entire, I mean, there's the moment where he's lifting a truck that's or a, a vehicle, like just lifting off the ground, like like any human being can do for a, you know, 2000 ton vehicle. But <laughs> my favorite moment is when he's taking on all the bad guys, you know, by himself, army of one, you know, and uh, there's a wall of mud as there tends to be a wall of mud that's so deep he can sink right into it. <laughs> And what's that? I just I just laughed because it's you know it's it's so predator. Um it's so predator, but it would have <laughs> been first. This would be 86. Predator came out in 87. Oh, so if Predator ripped this off, that does make more sense. Yeah. That does make more <laughs> sense. So so he's he's stuck right into it because there's a, a such a huge wall of mud. Because there tends to be in places. <laughs> and he's and he's he's in it and a guy walks past him one of the bad guys so he goes and he pulls the guy down behind by his collar and then runs off the guy's not hurt he's not knocked out he didn't take his weapons he didn't do anything he was also down he did all that but in that mud this is, became like a chameleon hid in there just so he could pull a guy down by his but onto his butt by the by his neck collar. That's my favorite moment in the whole thing. That's incredible. <laughs> I love that he just he hits one guy and the guy isn't even knocked unconscious and then he just runs away. <laughs> the guy just falls down into a seated position and Rambo's like, that takes care of that. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the same scene. <laughs> I I uh the you mentioned that that uh getting dressed montage. I think that's exactly copied from the movie. I think I think it's especially because it's that shot with him tying the 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 bandana around his head or the uh, that it's that's a very iconic Rambo shot. So I the think Rambo is copied. The, yes, the the uh, putting the the headband on is very iconic. I don't remember tying his shoes for so long while muscles glistened and moved <laughs> in a very dramatic fashion. I'll give it this. This movie or the movie soundtrack is in this, which is awesome because that's a great <laughs> soundtrack. And it, it heightens everything. Amazing. Uh, and I wanted to just before we get on to the other parts of this, this magnificent item, uh, uh, Neil Ross, who did the voice of uh, Rambo, uh, he was in every cartoon you watched in the 80s uh, as uh, often as additional voices, but he has uh, 281 credits, almost entirely voice work. Uh, and uh, he was uh, he played three or four different characters on G.I. Joe. Uh, he was Shipwreck, Buzzer, um, the Crimson Guard and Dusty in the uh, various versions of the G.I. Joe. He was uh, Keith and Pidge on Voltron. Uh, and uh, he was 
on the rock rock rest, rock and roll wrestling, uh, he was Mean Gene Okerlund. <laughs> I mean, they had a ton of name actor or voice actors doing this. I mean, Peter uh, Cullen and Frank Welker are among the voice cast in this in this uh, cartoon. I'm not sure. I think maybe only Peter Cullen is in the first episode here, but I mean, both are you know regulars and and voice multiple characters and that type of thing. Like yeah. it had a really good like. And the, the thing, the 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 voice of Rambo is funny because it's it is like Stallone, but it's not like it's not like overly mm-hmm. Rambo. You know, it's not that overly cartoonish Rambo voice, so it sounds kind of like him, but not like him at the same time. Yeah, it's like he like he's he's doing Sylvester Stallone's voice from a movie where he speaks clear and more clearly. Rather than the Rambo yeah, voice, <laughs> uh, this was Ruby Spears uh, Productions, who uh, you know, basically the gold standard of of animation uh, t- of Saturday morning animation at the time. Uh, so, I so the real the real reason for getting this kind of property um, onto Saturday morning is that the the kids have seen at least they know the character, uh, whether they've seen the movies or not. Um, it just was part of the zeitgeist that you knew who Rambo was because you could do jokes on any show about Rambo and everyone understood it without needing an explanation of the character. Um, I I remember I remember seeing a uh, at the time the movie was out and it after it crossed over 100 million domestic box office which is back in 86 extremely impressive. Mm. I remember E.T. Uh, Entertainment Tonight doing a news story on it where they went to a, uh, various schools and asked the children how many of them had seen it. And like two thirds of the kids in almost every school has seen the film, you know, like either with their parents or by sneaking in. And, you know, it appealed to kids. Uh, I mean, the first one is not that violent. First Blood is not that violent, really. Uh, only one person dies, I believe, and it's an accident. He falls out of a helicopter yeah. by accident. Um, it, it, I mean, Rambo's it's violent without being gory in any way. Violent in the fact that he blows up things and different things, but not, but it's not. He doesn't kill really. Yeah, uh, he's very sympathetic. By the second one, this is again, this is a hard R, violent. You know, lots of blood, lots of whatever. Uh, it's a war movie. Yeah. The second one is a war movie. The first one is 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 not. Um, it's an anti-war it's movie. If anything, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so so I mean, it's it's very interesting to 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 see how much more people were into. It was a much bigger hit as an action film that was super violent than it was as kind of the almost drama with action yeah. sequences that the first one was. Yeah. Well, I remember the recess, uh, basically balls, conspiracy groups that we gather together and plot and to try to see, I believe part two was in the theater and uh, part one was playing at, on pay TV mm. and none of us had seen it. And we were determined to find somebody at home who had paid tv that their parents were there so we could get to their house after school and it took about three weeks to like get the stars to align um (laughs) it was a massive conspiracy we were all working on the plot to see this thing it was a big deal well you've yeah you've nailed another thing that was changing at that time which is uh you know the channels that uh, like HBO that ran just movies 24 hours a day. So uh, if your parents subscribed to that, um, you know, it was basically like the amount of policing of your TV was very, very different all of a sudden. And, and a lot of people weren't ready for that. Um, you know, in the same way that, I mean, the video store was like that too, that, you know, if you you could sneak stuff by your parent by, uh, you know, you put... Uh, Howard the Duck on top and Rambo on the bottom and just Red too. <laughs> Your mom's waiting in the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember being being 12 years old and trying to rent 
I can't remember what movie it was, but it was an R-rated film. And the, the girls behind the counter, the, there was two of them. They were probably 16. And one went, oh, can we rent this to them? The other one went, we don't care. And <laughs> <laughs> they rented it to me, right? Amazing. Like, yeah. It was, it was the 80s. I, I rented Die Hard like 20 times. Uh, <laughs> which is also an, I rated I rented it from different places. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you, like the amount of policing. Uh, I mean, basically, just if you didn't want to be like if you didn't want to be monitoring that stuff, you just wouldn't bring in trauma films or whatever was like the that like that leading uh, that cutting edge of of R as opposed to the it's just you know there's just too much shooting in it kind of thing. Well, and again, mm-hmm. it's 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 an American culture. It's guns, and mm-hmm. guns are not as as I mean, sex is taboo. Guns aren't, right? There's a lot of explosions in this. Actually, that was that was another thing that struck me was the amount of uh, blowing stuff up. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> which is I'm an interesting. Pleasantly surprised how not over the. I was going to say not over the top, but that's not really. Yeah, but I was really expecting, like, I don't know, some sort of cute sidekick or somebody really wild to join the team. And <laughs> I mean, you do have the ninja and the native companion, I guess, who join later. But as far as 80s cartoons go, this is fairly mild and not like gi joe like it's random i mean it, it is he's recognizable as rambo in some ways well there's a lot more characters yeah. as we say that, that are to come um i i do like one of my favorite sequences you're talking about the stuff blowing up is uh when he recruits um he only recruits one guy actually it does take a long time doing it <laughs> but the, the guide is already there the the master of disguise cat she's already there and uh so you know she's the one who lets the government know about what's happening with these savage um terrorist group so he goes to after he you know there he's told by troutman uh your country needs you and he's like all right you know, and uh, he goes to recruit his pilot, as you called him. His name is Turbo. So he's this vehicle expert. And uh, he's driving, Turbo's driving in the middle of a race. <laughs> and so two cars are exploded in the middle of the track. And <laughs> another car comes up on them and explodes. So he goes and he rides on two wheels between all these other cars. And everyone's like, great driving. And I'm like, why are you so excited? There's at least three dead human beings <laughs> in these cars behind you. Why is everyone like, great driving? That's awesome. I did, uh, as Nick said, like, I killed myself laughing when, you know, that guy just walks away from the race. Like, you're, half the people are dead. Um, you know, like, yeah. this is yours. And he's like, nope. Rambo needs me. And then they get there and he's like, I will wait here as you go do things, Rambo. I will be here for moral support. I'll go, oh no, is Rambo in trouble? And then not do anything. Did you um, find it odd that the pit, pit crew went, you can't leave, we're we're winning. In my head, I was thinking, you know, if you stop your car, you're not winning anymore. <laughs> this is true. So other people will pass you. <laughs> Like, he's upset you've gotten out of the car and you're leaving, yet you've sort of already well, given up the way that race as soon as you've stopped your car and got out of the, got out. Yeah, you should get out. <laughs> I mean, a pit, pit stop is what it is. Like, you know, everyone's going to end up taking it so it evens out, but but gets out. Yeah, you know, usually that's not a thing. <laughs> uh, Turbo, voiced by James Avery, the late James Avery from yeah. uh, Fresh Prince. Yes, Father of Fresh Prince. He voiced a couple other characters. He did a lot of voice acting, actually. I no, think he was the voice of John Gerard in that one wrestling. Shredder is his big one. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Which that's one? awesome. Uh, Avery was Shredder. That, that's what he's... Uh, I oh, think was he? It's the voice of Shredder. On the Teenage Mutant well, Ninja Let's see. It's our dog. I mean... That's he was the junkyard dog. That is a, that's awesome. Yeah, junkyard dog. It's yeah. amazing. Um, 
yeah, some inter- that's some interesting uh, cred there. Um, and uh, and who was the voice of Hulk Hogan in that? Who was it? Was know, it Hulk Hogan? Was <laughs> no, it was the brother on. Uh, I can't remember his name. With the brother on Everybody Loves Raymond. What's his oh, name? Really? Brad Garrett. <laughs> Brad Amazing. Garrett. Yeah, that's incredible. Hulk Hogan. Oh, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obscure facts that have nothing to do with our podcast. Yeah, well, that's okay. We'll be uh, maybe next series. We'll be doing just nothing but wrestling. We'll do. Uh, I, I think there's I there's so much to mine. There's so much to mine from eighties, yeah, from eighties uh, wrestling properties. That that weird time when wrestling oh, was becoming uh, so mainstreamed. Oh, it'll be a chance to do uh, an episode of Glow. Oh, I would love to do an episode of Glow. We could talk. We would need at least a four-hour episode to do one half-hour episode of Glow. As, as long as we uh, pair it with that roller derby show. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Let's get done with the cartoons. Anything else to All say? Right. I, I have uh, yeah, like, uh, Nick. I Nick, tell Ooh, us about, Nick, tell us about the toys that came along with this. Uh, Coleco, uh, Coleco Vision had a full line of toys for this series. Every character got a f- series. If you're collecting them, uh, pay attention to the accessories. There were a lot of them, and they were small. Uh, Rambo got a plane, a helicopter, and the most sought-after uh, piece is the action playset, which is Savage savage command of uh, savage strike headquarters it is highly sought after lots of little pieces and is so incredibly cool look up the pictures online <laughs> this is this is one of those like you the put one in the post right you put one in the post right yes absolutely there, James? yeah oh yeah absolutely I, lo- I love popping in some photos of these toys uh these are uh because that's 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 what these were all about was getting those toy lines. So, uh, and uh, yeah, there were there were a couple of these that that I'm uh, I'm sure popped up in my my collection as a little kid. Uh, I have this vague memory of a of a Rambo kicking around. Uh, they were also developing something called muscle powered Ram- Rambo for this line, but it never got produced. Oh, no idea magic. what it is, but muscle powered sounds pretty cool. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Any last thoughts on Rambo? This was this was one that uh, yeah, certainly yeah. one of the ones that brought us to it. I, I again, I'm curious. When was the last time you watched the properties, and are you anxious to go back and watch them again based on this? I think I watched them. I probably watched. I might have watched all of them leading to when the the last one came out um and that's that's been a few years now like i think i did go back and watch all of them at that point i can honestly say i don't think i'm ever a more than a year away from having watched any <laughs> three Rambos. they are some of my favorite films for all different reasons which is why i love this series so much is i mean the first one is just a legitimately good film and by the third third one, it's just that cartoon action thing that's so incredibly awesome and so different from the first one. Oh yeah, there are there in it really five. Is. is it five Rambo's in total? Well, the six is on its way out. Rambo: Last Blood is on its way out, and hopefully, it makes up for Rambo Part Five because I think the first four all very different, all very good. Three maybe probably being the weakest, but for me personally, but I enjoy all of those and I have watched them probably about two years ago. I'm going to watch them again. I might even give part five another try, though it was a disappointment at the time when I saw it mm-hmm. when it came out. But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan also of the series. The first one, I think, is maybe Stallone's best performance. Really just good acting, uh, you know, um, that he's underrated in that. Or something and I really love that film, and yeah, the other ones are are fun in different ways. Yeah, I mean, four, four um, 
which is the one just called <laughs> Rambo, which is it's one of those series that has the weirdest uh, that has super weird naming convention. Uh, I mean, just the like the over the top violence of that one just killed me. Like I just I get, saw that in the theater, absolutely loved it. Uh, wasn't a fan of Last Blood as well, uh, but uh, I, I think I've gone back to two and four more than anything else. Last Blood is is that part four? I thought Last Blood is the one that's about to come out. No, Last Blood's part is no. part five. Uh, okay, that was the 2019. I don't think there is another one. There's one rumored, but I don't think that's that it is like a going concern. Okay, mm-hmm. Rambo New Blood. Teaser trailer. Oh, is out. Is that a, is that a real teaser trailer? Because I've been burned before. I, uh, oh, there, there's. It says teaser trailer Lionsgate HD. Um, as of December of 2022, so it might be fake. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been burned on trailers before. There's uh there's channels that that put up. <laughs> uh, yes, Screen Culture. Yeah. That's that's one of the ones that puts up the fake culture. Not uh, the fake uh, trailers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this. I think this thing, it's Rambo Six: New Blood. Just uh, a quick uh, search to see if it's an actual real thing. If it has a <laughs> Wikipedia page or IMDb. Um, IMDb is where it would it, be. Uh... IMDb is saying TV series based on the popular action films Rambo, which stars Sylvester Stallone. So apparently, a TV series Rambo: New Blood is at least. Being thrown about. All right. Uh, yeah. Without yeah, well, Stallone, obviously. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I I, I would Rambo go. Was last, last Blood was part five. I don't know. Correct. I only watched it the one you say it came out in 2019. Yeah. So it's four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, it was uh, too, too bad. Man, I love them. It's it seemed yeah, it seemed a little a little late for the subject matter it was covering. I get uh, yes, it did. Uh, but I I would go for if they want to bring this cartoon back, I'm in. I'm I'm on board. Uh, I enjoyed yeah. it. Now, Jack, you said last episode. How did they air this? Because it wasn't uh, like you say, originally it was a it was a, it was a daily syndicated show. Okay. Uh, for the cartoons, similar to similar to like She-Ra, He-Man, Thundercats, those were all daily shows that that out there. So, so there were sixty episodes. Originally, it was a five episode mini series in April of of eighty mm. six. It was picked up as a full series in September of eighty six. So, okay. um, yeah, sixty episodes daily, and uh, you know, so that would have would have lasted a couple years then. Yeah, because uh, GI Joe started that way, and then they moved it to Saturdays. Is my recollection. Yeah, uh, yeah, I believe Transformers. Was a, yeah, Transformers daily as well for a while, and yeah, yeah. Because I remember, called- I remember getting up, like setting the alarm clock, uh, cl- alarm clock for seven a.m. so we could watch GI Joe, and then going back to sleep um, until uh, it was time to get ready for school, and it drove my mom nuts because. If you're up for a half hour and then go for a nap, <laughs> you are slow yeah, getting out there for your toast. Uh, <laughs> it it, it kind of set that kind of sounds to me like it set the trend for you for the rest of your life. That does sound yeah, that does sound like me yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I did that for uh, I did that for the royal wedding too. So you know. Um, <laughs> there you go, Nick. Any last thoughts? No, no. This is a good one. Give it a try. Don't expect anything deep. <laughs> yeah, you're not. I can't not, wait for ninja show up. <laughs> you have to just, you have to jump ahead. Yeah, I gotta jump ahead when there's ninjas. Oh, I love ninjas. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially eighties ninjas, man. Oh yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, it's just past Halloween as we record this, and I had one ninja come. Um, but. Uh, I should have given him extra candy because Ninja. Yeah, because in the 80s, you would have had 20. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, that is that wraps up uh, the 1986 Rambo cartoon, which is, as I said, the the granddaddy of all of these. And uh, and also, uh, I think the next episode, uh, I said that this was the only one that 
that is all maybe I didn't say that it was one of the things I like that the Rambo cartoon is interesting is that there's no PG content in that series. Um, you know, Robocop yeah. became PG at the third film, for example, but uh, yeah, all, there's no PG Rambo movie. Um, and, uh, and I don't believe there is for our next property either. Uh, next time we'll be looking at Toxic Crusaders from uh, 1991. Well, these are closer to X-rated than to R-rated <laughs> as far as the violence is Very concerned. True. They're pretty much unrated, all of them, and uh, no, nothing close to PG. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh toxic crusaders uh as we record this is on tubi uh, and uh so take a check at that and uh we will be back with that next time so this is the cult film showdown you can follow us on instagram and you can support us on patreon and you can subscribe on youtube and on your favorite podcast app uh, we are sponsored by WeTalkPodcast.com, the home of the Octagon and the home of many really great uh, podcasts. Maybe we'll do a crossover with that wrestling one if it's uh, at uh, and do the uh, rock and wrestling. That's a good idea. That's a good yeah. idea. And uh, well, and, and maybe we got a crossover with the We Talk Comics guys with uh, Toxic, because I think it was a Toxic Crusaders car- eh, comic book too. Um, that's true yeah. <laughs> three issues or something uh, all right and uh we talk podcast has a facebook and they have a twitter and we will be back next time <laughs>